Yeah. <laughs> All right, you go over there. Would you get get there? Uh, okay. <laughs> With my coffee. Uh, okay, if I mess you up. <laughs> I did. I think I moved it just a touch. You have two seats over there. Just some seats right. All right, I think um, since we don't have to move already, let's get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming to the presentation. Okay, so again, my name is Afina, I'm with Envisage International. Uh, just to give you a bit of background about the company Envisage, we do uh, international education, uh, recruiting, uh, lead generation for colleges and universities. We have a main website, flagship website called internationalstudent.com, where we have um, over six million uh, visitors come to visit the site each day, and we can express interest about uh, studying in the U.S. and um, do research on them, um, contact the schools um, that they want to study at. And oh, wow, we're getting more people coming in. We have two more seats in front, right here. Unfortunately, we can't choose these rows here. <laughs> you know, um, if you can get a, a camera running across the chair, you can go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to speak up. We'll set it up as we go on. You can just leave it. We'll set it up as we go on. Okay. That's part of a presentation. So we'll... <laughs> okay. So actually, okay, this was supposed to be a surprise. So um, we're actually on air live. We're actually on air. That's why we have a camera. And this is what we look like. So hopefully, I apologize to everyone who's watching this um, outside of this room when we just knock the camera. <laughs> so we actually we are live right now. So anyway, so really quick, I'm with the College of Idaho, and that's in Idaho, a small state there. And the college is a very small uh, liberal arts college, about 1,100 students. I advise all international students, and I also teach in our leadership minor program there. And I also work a bit with our admissions department, kind of advise them when we're looking at international student recruitment when it comes to issues of visas and all that stuff. So that's fun stuff we do in international education. <laughs> all right, and before we get into the need of it, I just want to get a, an idea of experiential media, whether that's Facebook, uh, Twitter, and is it for work or personal? Uh, okay. Personal work. work. How about just for work? Okay. So, about, so about one. And what do you? If you don't mind, what do you use it? Um, I read people's updates. Okay. Friends who post on your laptop. All right. So, in terms of what do you use it for? I use Google Docs. Google Docs. Okay. Google Docs. Google services. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. 
could you share where your where your broadcasting live? Oh, it's, it's through the Google platform. So um, we shared on uh, Google Plus website. Uh, I'm sorry, Google Plus page. So whoever is following us on Google Plus. They see it just on Facebook where you have a post and you can click to ISVP for events. Um, As we go along, we'll explain how this actually plays out. This is actually live to the public. So this is, and we'll talk a bit more about how you can harness technology, the technology to to go live. So right, right now, as it says, we are pretty much anyone who knows where we are is watching us and listening to this presentation as well. Okay, so let's go over the agenda of what we'll be talking about. Obviously, this is a live Google Hangout. Uh, we'll talk about what that means first. I'm sorry, later after we go over what. How to set up a Google Hangout, uh, what they are, how we use it as a company uh, in different ways, and Sage will give uh, a different examples as well. Um, and then, if we have time, we'll go over a case study that we have done with Mississippi State University. Um, that's one of our clients. And then we'll end with some best practices and lesson learned from all the Hangouts that we have done um, in the past. And then we can do a comprehensive Q&A at the end. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what a Google Plus page look like. And sorry, I have to make sure people at home see this as well. So I'm going to make a switch real quickly. So, so now this is what people at home will see. Before, what they saw was the camera seeing me talking. Um, but here's a Google Plus page for uh, Sage. Uh, So we're looking. We're talking about two things: Google Hangout and Google Plus. Google Plus is a is a, is a platform where, where everything takes place. If you are familiar with Gmail, how many of you have Gmail accounts? Google Gmail. So pretty much everyone. Well, Gmail. If you get into Google Plus, you actually create a Gmail. Account. You get that screen. So what a Gmail account does is it gives you access to all those uh, all those tools. That would include calendars, Docs, Docs Drive, and Hangouts as well. So um, so so what it is basically, and I'll just read out what um, uh, Google themselves say about Google Plus, and they say that it's the unification of all Google services: it's Gmail, YouTube, Maps, Docs Drive, and the calendar. It's very very similar to Facebook, uh, with a few differences there. Uh, Google Plus. Is A lot more people use Google. Nowadays, we say if you have a question, Google it. That's been a search for it on Google. Uh, so basically, whatever you would put there would be much easily accessible. And that is what it's, it's done. So this is basically the background of Google Plus. And this is our page at the College of Ida Home, and I will talk about what we use it for. But in a nutshell, that is what it is about. Okay. And just want to show you see my face. <laughs> this is Google Plus for international student.com. So that's us, uh, Google Plus page. And um, as Sage mentioned, it's very much um, like Facebook. If you have Facebook, you're probably going to know with this. You have the big picture on top. You have different uh, feeds and posts that you can uh, put. Um, and then you can have your friend list and different things here. So we have a post about Thanksgiving. You can link and people can look at it and share. Um, what's kind of unique about um, Google Plus though is that you can put people into different circles. So you can have a circle 
that is just for your uh, co-workers, one for your friends, and if we're talking about how you can use it in, at your institution, you can have a sofa just for newly, newly arrived students, and it will be related just to a hangout. Um, you can invite only people within a certain circle to watch a particular hangout. So let's say you're doing a new student orientation and you want to do an orientation um, about how to adjust to life in the U.S., what you need to do as a newly arrived international student. You can just only have those people and uh, anyone else who's really not going to be interested in that. Um, sure. Question. Like the students have to have the rule, right? Yes, they do have to have. Because um, um, I, I still find that many international students are quite keen on using Hotmail still. Right. So, um, you know, one of the things I think when we when we look at the Hangouts, so one, one of the ways you would hang is basically Google Plus is a platform that gives you Hangout. What we will be looking, what we are doing right now, right now we are actually online, and we are being, we actually also on YouTube, uh, our channels on YouTube. So someone doesn't necessarily have to have a Gmail account to see the live Hangout, which is what we're doing, and we'll talk about the differences. So anyone right now who has a computer who's on YouTube on our channel is actually seeing us as well. This in, in some countries, both of them are blocked. Yes, right. Yes. So so blocked. sometimes yeah. they open, sometimes they shut. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, YouTube and Google. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of yeah. yeah what do we do? You have uh, China and Vietnam that mm -hmm. uh, would have well, problem accessing yeah. this. Yeah. Some other, like Turkmenistan, doesn't have okay. any connection to. Because I have students there. Yeah, really. <laughs> so they don't even know what Facebook is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And in terms of adoption, which I think is what you're uh, talking about, we'll get into this in further detail as well about um, Hangout. But in terms of Google Plus, as a Nature, talking to uh, Chinese students, um, you have to um, evaluate what your needs are, what your resources are, and kind of pick and choose what um, platform you want to be engaged in. But Google is, of course, very big, and they have a really wide reach around the world, even in um, countries where uh, it's being blocked. Um, and plus, it integrates with all the other services that you have. Um, so what's great about that is, uh, for example, for this particular Hangout, we scheduled it in advance, and someone had a question, how did we share it? We shared through all the different social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, email, and we sent links to people. And when they are SVP to say that, oh, I do want to watch, or, um, learn more about using Google Plus. It because it's integrated into all the Google services that it has. The calendar, for example, get this event added on uh, automatically when they say I want to attend, and they would have gotten a notice on their phone five minutes before the event starts and say, Hey, don't forget to watch this Google Hangout. You can. When you need to. Okay. Sage, anything to add on that? So, last thing about Google, so Plus Yen is really just a platform, like any other social media platform. That is really all it's for. The way we use it at the College of Idaho, and we can switch over to that page, is we just use it to share stories. So, it's, again, it's one of those media you try to, one of those uh, tools we have to try and harness the students from our who we are. One of the things we use is we have pictures, we have more like blogs, I guess, short stories that students tell. And anyone who's able to get to our page or to our YouTube channel actually gets to see that. So that's another way to just share this information out there. Uh, one of those many tools. One of the ways we use it, I know for my institution, is when we're looking at international students who are not able to come to our campus physically, this is one of those tools that they use to try and see what's there. So we will interview people. I think I'm on there somewhere on our YouTube channels. We talk about what we do. 
and then and then they come in. So that's really kind of what the tool is about. So you can use it again. It's one of those tools in the Facebook or this, but this seems to be growing in popularity. It's probably the second largest used network, social <coughs> network right now after Facebook. The intent was to displace the Facebook when they was competing. But Facebook has obviously taken on a different channel, different direction. So Google Plus is coming up slowly. Uh, it has a few advantages that Facebook doesn't have, and vice versa, and that's what we'll look at. And that's part of Hangout. We'll look at the Hangout part of Google Plus. So obviously, they come out with new features. Well, in the last two or three months, for example, we've been doing quite a lot of Hangouts, and they're always adding new uh, features all the time. So now that we have uh, Google Plus um, explained, uh, showed you already, let's talk about once you have a Google Plus page, uh, how do you set up a Hangout? Um, so let's get to our page, for example. So, for you guys, for example, instead of having a university page where you might not have access to it all, you might be able to uh, create a page just for the international office, for example. Um, so you have more uh, unique content and share content that's relevant to, um, to your international student rather than everyone, uh, domestic, domestic student, faculty, alumni. Uh, and tailor those messages uh, accordingly. And in terms of setting it up, it's quite simple. Um, once you're on your page, you have this uh, area here on the left. You would just go down to Hangout. And you can click on Start Hangout on Hangout. Before I do that, let's um, say to explain there's two types of uh, Hangout that you can do. So let me ask you, how many of you are familiar with Skype? Skype. You use yeah. Skype is spinning kind of everywhere. Yeah. How many of you use it on a regular basis? Um, what do you use it for? I mean, what do you use it for? Personal. 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 And it's like, like I mentioned, you know, I have one uh, person I'm in touch from Turkmenistan. Facebook doesn't work. Skype works. Skype works. Okay. So. <laughs> so International student, I have a student that's in Korea, and he has to do the uh, army for two years. So okay. he's there, he'll be coming back eventually, but just an indication for okay. the international office. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Yes. Before students go abroad, they can talk with the program director before. Actually, I was I was interviewed for my job through this guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I got the job. I look good on camera, I guess. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing. So, uh, <laughs> so Skype is very popular. Skype is now the department of Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. But Google Hangouts, the, the Hangouts is actually two types of Hangouts. One is just a regular Hangout where you can have up to 10 people, very similar to Skype. So you have a conference, so you can have up to 10 people, that's the minimum. Um, and so basically, you have this conference call. I like to look at it as a conference call, basically, where you can see each other wherever you are at. The advantages of that is that because it's integrated with Google, if you have a Google Doc, you're working on a presentation, you can all work on it at the same time while you see each other. So you have this, it's almost like you're sitting in the same room, but you're probably different, different parts of the country. So that's kind of an edge of a Facebook or Skype, and this is what, this is what Google says to us. So uh, we're not promoting Google Plus, we don't no reps, we just train what's the advantages are. And so there's a so thing that we have that as a conference call. Uh, the catch with the with the hangout is that you have to invite people in, so you just it's not it's not available to the public. It's very streamed. You're, you're done once you log out. It's all completed, and you know that's really quite probably the main one is sharing information as you work together. The Google Hangout on air, <coughs> the Hangout on air, which is what we are doing, is more like a webinar, a live streaming conference. So like we are on, we are streaming live. The way that works is um, you can't invite uh, people per se, but you can send out links to tell them where to find you. And when you have a Google on air because streaming, it actually saves it onto YouTube. So anyone who has YouTube who can get your page, 
you can actually see it. it's open to the public. So those are the main two differences that we have. Can I ask you a question on that? Yes. So we, ha I have a, um, a YouTube channel. Can you tie it into your YouTube channel to automatically <coughs> say it's under that channel? Yes. 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 Because for yes. example, this hang once we end it, it automatically gets uh, posted on our YouTube page. Okay. So, so as long as you create the hangout under your account, so in this case, it will save up to each other. Yeah, so you have to always so tie it in. And, and some might say that's probably a disadvantage because you have to have a Google account. And you know, but every, we have so many emails going on around. One more probably doesn't do any harm. Sure. You know, but that's why you don't hang out from here. Yes. Vimeo versus YouTube. Any, I mean, can you link it to Vimeo? Because we're having better luck with Vimeo, Vimeo. than we are getting with YouTube. YouTube for our international presence. Okay, oh, that was a big one. For the advantage of YouTube, this is free, right? Free. Right, so we did have to pay. Have to pay. We do. Pay but it, then again, it's worth it. It's, it's most it's of our population in the world. Yeah, so you know, that cannot access YouTube. Yeah, yeah. you know, again, it's probably, I guess it's with social media, with so much out there, you really have to determine what works best for your, for your, okay. for your contacts. Because there's so many of them mm -hmm. now. For some, and I know we've used in our institution, we've used Skype for interviews, mm -hmm. we've used Skype extensively. We're trying to switch over to a different platform. Again, it really depends on where your population is. And what I'm asking works. is, can you use Vimeo with with Google? YouTube? I, you know, with I, Google I, Plus. I mean, is there like I, you know, that's Google uh -huh. Plus. That's Google. So Vimeo is different. <laughs> so true. I know. I you know, yeah, yeah. That's a question we will probably have to find out. And if someone has an answer, it will be answered in the stock market. In the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're directly related. Yeah, I don't think they are because yeah. uh, there's a competitor. So they are competitive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, the good thing about using this and YouTube is that it, you, you can still share it in so many different places. I'll show that later, but I'll just um, talk about it now. The great thing about this is you do it on Google Plus and then hang out. It lives on your Google Plus page. It gets uploaded automatically to YouTube. So that's already two places that your content lives on for forever. Um, you have, <laughs> yeah, but if you want it to live on, <laughs> hopefully if you're doing this professionally, it will be something that you want to live on for a while at least, but you do have control over it. Uh, you have um, access to those uh, videos, so you can actually post it on your website, and I'll show that as well. Um, so here's our website, internationalstudent.com, and we have a resources uh, where uh, part of that is all the Hangouts that we've done uh, mm -hmm. in the past. So you can see here we did a uh, live Hangout about uh, getting your visa approved, how to pick your major. Uh, this is the case study that we'll uh, go into later, a Hangout with Mississippi State University, um, and so on. So you can see that um, not only does it live on Google+, Plus. YouTube, you can put it on your website as an additional resource and more uh, outlet where people can find your video. So rather than just having it on Vimeo only, and they have to go on Vimeo, with this, it lives on in so many places. You can even post it on your Facebook so uh, as an external link. So you can promote that on Facebook, on our Twitter. So when so which one is the main source? Is it put when you link it to YouTube, mm -hmm. and if you get rid of the YouTube account, does it get rid of it when you post it on your Facebook or on your website? If you delete it off YouTube and yeah. your content lives on YouTube, then yes, if you link to that, then you can see that won't exist. So yeah. Right. Yes. So um, this is kind of an analytics question, but. So if I click on this on your website, will that tie into my YouTube, my original YouTube account, and then I, so I can track my analytics? So you're talking about uh, YouTube analytics. So if I just click on that, yeah, where does it go? It goes to. Okay, so that's just tied into your page. But then yes, it's, and then the video is okay. YouTube. Yeah. and I'll show you as well on our U, uh, YouTube page. You can see that here, the secret to getting your F1 visa approved. That was just on the website on our resources page. 
is also on YouTube. So this is what I'm talking about is it's searchable and it's findable in a lot of different places, which is I think it's an advantage. And Sage, anything? Okay, yes, yeah, one more thing is um, we can also have a Q&A. So if we were able to have a Q&A as well, if it's live hangouts, you can do that. But when you record these, people can play it again, and whatever you had, it's all recorded in, and people can play. But for those of you here, yesterday we had a webinar that we watched on social media. How many of you were here? How many of you watched that? No. There was a webinar we watched uh, yesterday, the afternoon, and it was recorded in 2012. Uh, it was, but it was very similar. You record it, you can play it again later, later on, as long as it's still there. But if you delete it, then it's obviously gone. But you can always come back to it as well. Okay. So um, that's how I tried a little bit. I wanted to show you how to set up a Google Hangout. So we mentioned before, there's a regular Google Hangout which you can think of it like a conference call. You talk one-on-one uh, -on -one or we, a, a small group of people where you can have a dialogue, and then Google. Uh, Hangout on air, which is more like a broadcast a webinar where you can invite so many people to um, watch you present, like right now. Um, so, all you need to do is again go to this side bar, click on Hangout, and you'll get to this page. You'll be able to, uh, click on Start Hangout on air. You can give your Hangout a name. Um, this will be uh, publicly visible, so obviously you want to name it something that your students or potential student would understand, be enticing and searchable. So study at so-and-so college, college fair, or something like that. You can give it more detailed description as well. You can start it now, or you can set schedule it to start later. You can set the date and the time. You can make the audience public. Um, so anyone will be visit international. So if I were to do a hangout just for people in my company. I can just say, hey, I want to invite people in my company circle to attend this Hangout. For you, you can have a circle for um, potential student to talk about what is great about your school. You can have uh, a circle for recent graduate, talk about, OK, alumni um, benefits. I think you get the point. Uh, you can really tailor um, your hangout and direct it. Yes? Um, and then will that generate a link so you could invite anyone that is a new Google Plus? Yes, you'll get a link where you can send it by email, post it on anywhere, and they can just click and then they can RSVP and they hang out. But if you do the invitation here, they'll also get um, automatically generated invite <laughs> as well. And are you guys doing the Q&A right now with your live thing? Are we able to see how that works? The Q&A, yes, we are. Um, there would be Q&A at the end, and you are. But, and thank you for bringing that up, bringing that up, is when you do a live Hangout um, on your screen, if you turn on the Q&A feature, people can type their questions right when you're doing your presentation and it will show up on your screen. So you can answer that um, during your presentation. You don't have to wait until the end to do it. a question, you can mark that as being answered as you're answering them. So let's say you're doing um, a hangout that lasts an hour long, and Joe Smith asks a question, 
how do I get admitted to uh, the College of Idaho? And I answer. to know, oh, when did he ever answer my question? You can see, oh, yes, he did. And he answered on the 20 minutes mark, so I don't need to watch 20 minutes before I get to my answer. Is that feature only available to people who are either by me or your circle since you're broadcasting publicly? Hmm. Good question. I need to check, double check on that because when I see all of them, and I believe everyone can see um, other people's questions as well. Yep. Yeah, I'm just having a hard time understanding if somebody has, let's say, you send them the link to Yahoo or to somebody's Facebook. Yes. If they have the link, um, but they don't have Google account, they don't have YouTube, they don't have anything like that, but they have the link, and they click on the link. And they send them to your hangout. Are they able to participate in the Q and A? They can watch. Yeah, they, can, they, they should already watch, but they can't really participate. I don't believe so. Okay. Because when you ask a question, it does have your name okay. next to it. So I don't think if you don't have a uh, Google anything at all, okay. you'll be able to see the data on that. But I can double check on that as well. Because they watch the whole presentation. So we've got a case study, so we have a case study that we wanted to showcase. Um, uh, doing the hangout with us and with them is that if they want to increase the number of inquiries that they get from potential students because this is more recruitment, um, hangout, uh, telling potential students about Mississippi State, and also expand their web presence, um, obviously. As I showed you, once you have an hangout, you get a page, uh, you got videos that live in multiple places, and you do reach quite a large number of people. So um, let me show you first on internationalstudent.com. Um, So Mississippi State has a um, featured school uh, page that lives within our website, internationalstudent.com. And if someone were to be interested um, in studying there, they can fill out this uh, form here, and uh, that will get sent directly to uh, the admission officer there. Um, so they have a page here, and you can see that the Google Hangout that they did with us, I showed you that it lives in the resource Google Plus page in Yahoo here. It's an example, you can put it anywhere you want. Um, you can click and watch about um, the school. If you get interested, you can fill out this form. And what happened here is that they decided to do it with us because uh, they didn't have a lot of expertise in terms of using Google Plus and Google Hangout, uh, and also the time available to them. It was a small <coughs> international student office, so the advisor said, oh, we just don't have the time to get the equipment, setting it up, um, invite people. So that we did that all for them. Um, we, what we did was we got a little Chromebook, so basically an inexpensive laptop. We get them a camera and a microphone. We ship it to them. All they needed to do was open it up on the day of and then start doing the Hangout um, to people around the world. Um, and in terms of marketing it, uh, letting people know, um, we mentioned before you can post it anywhere to invite people, but we also sent them 
email um, to invite them to post it on our own uh, Facebook as well. So not only did it go on to the Mississippi State uh, University own Facebook account and YouTube, we promote them as well. So there's a lot more <coughs> people that will attend. And just to show you what it looks like, we created a little video clip. Forty plus minutes long, so we just create a short clip to give you the highlight of what that was all about. Hi everybody, and thanks for joining us today for our International Student Hangout series, where we bring international students together with quality U.S. colleges and universities to promote higher education. Today we're going to be joined by Karen Lee, the Director of International Relations at Mississippi State University. We'll also be joined by Nandita Gupta, an international student at Mississippi State University from India. Karen will be introducing Mississippi State University, and Nandita will tell you a little bit more about her experience. A little bit about Mississippi State University. But really, before I do that, I really want to introduce Nandita Gupta. He's one of our uh, international students, and he will be joining us today. Nandita, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Um, I'm, I'm like um, Victoria said earlier that I'm from India. I'm from a town called Pune in Maharashtra and I'm studying electrical engineering at State. Whoa, electrical engineering. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about Mississippi first because you know what? Mississippi is much more than a river. The first thing <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me it's a river, but yeah, yeah, it's still a lot more than it. Yeah, it's yeah. a state too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But seriously, um, Mississippi offers so much. Did you guys know that some of the most famous writers are from Mississippi? For example, who do we have? We've got John Bush and um, these are ideas of the things that are not from Mississippi State. And they have an entire paper that is That's right, in the library. I forgot about yeah. that. It's called the John Bush and Room. <laughs> but what's important to you is we offer some of the majors that are important to you. We have over 80 of them. And the one thing that I really want you to take away from this um, Google Hangout is that Mississippi State offers you the exact same scholarship opportunities as we do to our American students. So if you have a decent, at least 3.0 GPA, and you do pretty good in the SAT or ACT, you have a really good chance to get a reduced rate to come to Mississippi State to study, and that's a great thing. Sure. Uh, this is during the Holy celebration last year, so a lot of a lot of my friends who would be watching this hangout. Were What's Holi? Holi well, is the festival of colors. It comes around March. And what country is it from? Uh, it's from India. Oh, okay. India. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of fun. Like we have a lot. Of, we got we got permission to play with colors, mm -hmm. and so it was just it was a dry Holi, so no mixing the colors with water because it will make a lot. Really huge international population, and when you can think of a lot of international students, that means a lot of culture, a lot of awesome food, a lot of interaction. Food is great. Food is great. So this, I think, was taken at the Nepali night organized by the Nepali Student Association. International Fiesta. Every spring we have a huge festival right here on campus, and this is, I think, when all of the International Student Association kind of showcase everything. Yeah, and I think you can basically eat your way from one end of the world to the other. Amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of them even had out before. So that's it's, right. It's it's a way for you to learn more about you know your culture and even others. Mm -hmm. This, I think, was a Iranian night. I think you yeah, have yeah. a picture of the Iranian New Year's. So, you know, even though you're not from here, this place has become a home for you. So, like, I call it my home away from home. 
So it's, you know, when, when anyone asks me, like if I have visited other states in the country and I go there and talk to different people and they ask me, hey, where are you from? And it's so instinctive that they say, oh, I'm, I'm from Mississippi. And yeah, actually, I am from India. <laughs> even though I'm, this, is, this is my home for me now. And a lot of international students feel the same way. Like, I think this guy right here is just, yeah, that's your goal for present. We're ready to answer some questions now, so if you want to submit your questions, we're ready for you. There you go. What is the minimum total score for an undergraduate? Hi, I'm a student from Morocco, and I'm wondering if there are any art classes in our college. Oh, yeah. Well, we do have my best friend with Pedro and I. Now we're going to move on to the next question. This is from uh, Kush, and he wants to know the GMAT is required, or she, I'm sorry, required as mentioned on your website, but is it compulsory? Well, actually, you know, required means compulsory, so yes. <laughs> it says that you have to have a GMAT, then you have to have a GMAT. <laughs> So I hope we helped and please contact Karen with any more questions that you have. She's really good with emails, like I usually kind of reply within 24 hours unless she's super busy with something else. So that we can um, answer the questions that we did not get to answer right now. So please go. Okay, um, so let's um, talk about that video clip. So as you can see, uh, there's Karen, she works in the international office at Mississippi State. And what's great about that is she brought in a real life international student from India to talk about it. And they had a little banter going on, they had a little fun, uh, which I think is great, rather than just having someone sit there uh, and talk um, on just the facts and making it really dry. Um, making it fun and interesting for students is always uh, great. One questions that comes up during the presentation and you can answer them live on air. You can mark it as being answered <coughs> and you can see exactly where in the videos their questions are being answered and can go directly to uh, get that. Um, and in terms of the forms that she talked about, she talked about this one um, because this was geared toward potential students. Um, and the result, I just want to share the result with, uh, with you on the Hangout. Uh, when we promoted it, um, we had 285 students ISVP to the event. Um, that will, they will watch it live, and 47 says maybe. And within the five day period of that hangout, um, this page on our site had over 1,600 um, views. So 1,600 people came to the site to, um, to this page to look at it, and <coughs> over 70 people fill out this form saying that they're interested in studying at to Mississippi, um, and what? Can, can you show us the Sacramento tour tabs? How much information you gather? I'm sorry. I just want to look at the online form. It's the second oh. tab, and the, um, does it to, go? I have to fill out. Oh, you have to fill yeah. it out. No, just just was curious how much information. You it's pretty short, basically. It Contact. Get yeah, this. just that's um, it. But of course. It, if you're doing it yourself, you can collect as many pieces of information as you want. Um, obviously, the more information you want to collect from someone, the less likely for them to actually do it for you. So there's a yes, just trade so get... in the balance mm -hmm. on there. Okay. Um, so that's the result of the hangout, the immediate result of the hangout. But because once you do it, it gets automatically uploaded to YouTube as well. And the, the views, the 285 students at ISPP to watch it live, 
that doesn't account people that watch it once it got uploaded to YouTube, meaning that they watch it later on after the live event. Do you have a question? Yes, yeah, I was wondering if um, you can see how many people uh, watch the live place. I know I have very good at virus, but I'm not used to it. I'm wondering if you can see Yes, but it's not 100% accurate because um, I created tests before and I invited people within uh, a company to watch and the, the number is not correct and people come in late, and people uh, leave early as well, so you only see it um, when they're there. So you can see it, uh, yes, but uh, just take out the degree of talking a little bit. But in terms of once the video is on YouTube, if they watch it on YouTube, we can actually see a very uh, concrete count of the number of times uh, it's been viewed. Yes. Uh, can you watch if the live event is on your um, smart device? Yeah, Google um, has an app that is on my iPhone, and I'm sure it would exist for Android as well. <laughs> um, and this is just for Android or iPhone? Or? It's both. Yeah, can you download the Yeah, can you download the Hangout? 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 Yeah, can you People from 38 different countries watch that. Uh, the top five includes India, um, India, yep. US, Egypt, Bangladesh, Malaysia. Uh, other than that, um, we also have uh, Spain, Germany, Kazakhstan, Colombia. So you have a really wide range of um, people from that different locations. For the U.S., even though they meet in the U.S., they were international students that are in the U.S. interested in doing their master's degree, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. You reach people here as well that are internationals and still want to continue that, their education. Question. Yes. When they were doing their broadcast, they were flipping between showing them and then I think they had like statistics and stuff. How do you go back and forth? Is that an easy setup to do? Yeah, so actually, that, you know, so there's two screens. Um, this is screen number two and this is screen number one. And we have the camera. So within the platform, the Google um, Hangout. On the left side, there's a pop-up that you click on share screen, and you can pay. You can get to that. I don't know exactly where to go. Honestly, I had a tech guy. But yes. Yeah. Sure. So that's our next section, which is um, some of the lessons we've learned and kind of best.
practices. I'll get into that very shortly, but for that other uh, person who has questions. All right, so let's get to that then in terms of lesson learning and best practices. You'll see here that we have a camera set up. It is an HD camera. Um, so setting up a Google Hangout is very simple, as I showed you. You just have to have an account and you go and you click a few buttons, name it, and invite whoever you want. Um, but in terms of the quality, uh, if you want it, Microphone. We got a little clip on microphone here as well that's wireless. In the past, we've used a microphone that is built in to the camera or built into um, the computer itself. What we found that it picks up a lot of uh, background noise, which was uh, not good. So that's why we got this uh, equipment for, for this purpose. Um, you can even do it with the camera, the webcam on your uh, laptop. But if you ever use that for personal use, you'll see that it kind of tilts back. Mm -hmm. And if it's on the table, you end up looking at your nose and people. <laughs> like, oh, why am I looking up your nostril? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we don't recommend that. Obviously, the quality is not going to be as good as well. So there is some um, investment that you can do. Not hugely expensive to make the quality better. And also, with your internet connection, you'll want to make sure that you have good, reliable, fast internet. Um, we're on Wi-Fi right now, so maybe it's not that fast, but it's still working. Last, uh, the last presentation that I did, we were doing the presentation, and the Wi-Fi just suddenly dropped right in the middle of the presentation. So obviously, that's not good, but we, we were in the hotel uh, conference, so you have less control over that. But if you are in your office, you want to have as much of a control environment as possible. In our office, we take one of our um, we show that oh. Pins on it to block out external. Cameras, we have a proper microphone, and the quality um, are quite good there. Um, you want to have uh, cable internet if that's um, in terms of staffing, because we have two screens and we're constantly switching between different pages that we want to show, switching to um, the camera to show the presenter. Right now, I'm more or less doing this on my on my own, so it's a little uh, not as seamless and fluid as we usually do it. Um, but it, when we do it in our office, we have at least two people sitting and down on the computer to control what is being shown to the audience at our. Um, not as confusing. Like, okay, I'm talking about this, and they have to sit down, as you saw me doing, and switch this uh, the screen. So we recommend at least two people uh, to uh, present and control, and a third person um, somewhere far away to watch the live hangout, making sure that everything is working properly. So for example, I could be talking right now, and my microphone might be um, as I was saying that, see if microphone is working. I believe it is working, but let's say it wasn't. Um, someone can send me a text and say, oh, we can't hear you. And we will never know because I'm just talking and then see um, that my microphone is going up and down. But sometimes technical issue may happen that you are not, um, you're not, uh, might not realize why you're doing it. Uh, time difference is another thing. Um, we did this worldwide, obviously. Uh, we're reaching people all, all over the world. But if you're doing it in the morning, uh, keep in mind if you want to reach students in Australia, for example, you might not want to be awake uh, to 
to do with vice versa. Um, dress code? You want to dress nice, yes, dress professional. Um, I've seen people that have done people hang out on webinars in general. In the hotel room, they look like they just woke up and they're doing your pajama. Um, obviously, you want to put up your best foot forward. Um, with the camera um, quality, you want it to be nice, the lighting to be good, and if you get all that and you uh, dishevel, um, that's not very, uh, not very attractive to whoever is watching. All right, uh, any questions? I think that would be um, it for today. So we'll welcome any questions that you have. Yes. On your screen, does it show you both? what you have up on the screen and yourself. So if I am sharing this screen with um, people that are watching it live, what I see is the screen. Okay. And when I stop sharing it, I see myself okay. from the camera. Yes. So to get people interested in um, joining Google Plus, do you so we that we get a link that you send people so that they can come directly to the hangout um, page and you don't use too much. We don't we don't have an orientation or anything. Um, we're not with the school, so we don't have orientation. Yeah. I'm prepared. Right. Right. So, give me a so, so uh, the whole point is, I get your point, is probably you want to promote it. You, you, you don't promote it during orientation. It's a tool, again, you're trying to share information. So what we we'll do for us is students that are not that are not here before, so we'll create all these links and then we'll give them the link. So we're not really telling them it's a Hangout, this is a webinar or something like that. But you have a link that is generated that you'll either send before they get to your orientation if you want to have some pre-arrival orientation. Or if it's during orientation, then all they get is just a link. So this is a link, go click on this link, and then this webinar that you can that you participate in. And if it's live, like what's happening, is you say, okay, from this time to this time, we have someone giving a presentation from somewhere, log in, this is a link that you can see with user Yeah, and I was thinking more yeah. of using it as a tool for students after they arrive, too. You could use it as well. But it's the same thing if you wanted to reach out, depending on your population. Either you could have something pre recorded, like what you've done, so you create one that's live. Or you could actually record yourself if you like, record yourself, save it on YouTube, and have them play on that. That's one way you could do that. Or if you have something live right at that point, you could create a handout and say, at this time, we want you to go watch this session. It's online, and you can this thing. So you could choose it online. Again, it's, uh, if it works out very well, you start creating the link, tell everybody click on this link, and you get there. I should see it as a tool for information. Yeah. Um, you know, keep an online orientation. Yeah. yeah, it is a really, it's a really powerful tool. And again, it's, it's, again, it depends on what your needs are because I know uh, our students are very tech savvy. There's so many things coming up. So trying to keep ahead of the curve this can be a challenge sometimes. There's so many things coming up. But it is another tool that you could definitely use if you wanted to use that. It's really helpful, the screen share feature. Me and my buddies, we were trying to, uh, we were being nerdy and trying to create our own game at one point. And so we basically shared my screen and we talked about it through that aspect. Since I had to be on the computer and we were different areas and not in the same area, so that I shared my screen and we kind of troubleshooted from my screen together and we kind of chatted that way. So, like visa processes, you know, if you have a student who doesn't know what they're doing, being, you can share the screen, being like, you know, circle it while you're doing this. This is what you need to do right now. This is where you need to be going, filling out this form, this line is this, and um, it's a good step-by-step -step process if that's something you're looking to do from afar. Right, just yeah, like when I showed you earlier how to set up the Hangout, I can show people that are watching this live online and say, oh, if you want to create a Hangout, here, this is where you go, do a little circle to see it, and then you can click in, you want to come here, you can get the and yeah, so they can see exactly what they need to do. Do you know how to do split screen?
Google Hangout where it's like one person's from Idaho and maybe someone else is from New York. You know, but they're on a split screen. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I'm going to mark out to that. Yes. So do you have a live on air? Who can ask questions? Anyone watching? Ask Anyone questions? who's watching can ask questions. Because again, remember, it's the link. Um, so I live on air when it's running live at that point, it's only a link that people have. And so we, we potentially could limit who's seeing that and um, because you haven't shared it to everyone. Communication and more ways to do that. And so essentially, you could actually limit your audience, your target, people whom you want to invite. Again, it's having that link. Once they have that link, they can pretty much get it. And has it. But once it's saved, you have it on YouTube. At that point, it's closed. Uh, it's something that we could record it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have the uh, evaluation here. It's still allowed. Uh, in this tone, we don't have enough. So if you download the app on your phone, you can do it on there too. All right. Thank you. Thank you.